my friends and welcome for the first time on this international channel on my first Q&A. This is gonna be a special video where I'm going to answer all your questions. Uh, if you remember, I made a post here on YouTube asking you to ask me something and I have selected all the best questions here. Um, if you also follow me on the Italian channel, this is gonna be a different video because in the Italian channel I will answer to the Italian questions and on this channel I will answer to the English questions. So b before answering your questions, for those of you who've been following for a few months, can you see the difference? I renewed my studio. Not, not only I, I put some order because it was a horrible mess, but you're probably used to see my studio this way okay i actually changed a lot of things here so basically i went from this horrible huge mess to this so i just want to show you briefly what what did i do here this beautiful rgb lighting was made by an RGB LED stripe that I bought on Amazon for 30 euros, which costs really nothing and have 10 meters. And this is, and it's pretty cool because you have this to control it. You can change colors and everything. And it's made so that every like 10 centimeters, you can cut it and attach parts together. So basically what I needed to do it is the RGB LED stripe, a pack of connectors, a solder, a cable to connect for example from here to there and you need the four poles cable and what i found out is that a usb cable is perfect for this kind of job you also need some hot glue some double-sided tape and that's it that's how you do it another thing that you probably noticed is that i put these which are very important because i understood the importance of shelves when you have too many things laying on a table is because you don't have shelves if you build shelves you can get rid of all the stuff and put it on them to free space. So I've put all my trophies here and light it up with the LEDs. And as you probably can see, there are no supports for the shelves. So how do they stay up? I don't know how to call them in English, but I found these, which you put in the wall. And then I made some holes on the shelves in order to put them on the wall without using the, the supports. I hope you understood what I mean. <laughs> and another nice thing that I did is that the most important thing about lights is that the lights needs to light up the subject, but you must not see the lights. For instance, I'm light up, you don't see the lights. Because if you see the lights, they're not good for your eyes. So you don't see the LEDs because they are hidden behind this black bar. So I bought these plastic bars and I attached them to the shelves with a double side tape in order to hide the LEDs. And one other important thing is that, as you probably can see, I've put the LEDs on the bottom and not on the top, because it's nicer to light up the trophies from the bottom. I've also put another shelf here to put the cameras, the batteries and all the stuff. I organized all my tools here. And that's it. That's how I made my office look better. By the way, let's dive deep into your questions. You asked me a few hundred questions, so I just selected the best ones. Maxling, Maxime Leninje, I don't know where you're from, so forgive my pronunciation. Do you have a strategy to find sponsors or is it chance a relationship a big factor in season budget? Great job, just keep going, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And actually many people asked question about how to get sponsors. So basically I, I cannot be considered as a professional rider or driver because I'm not. I'm racing thanks to my visibility that I have on social network. Uh, you probably don't know me very deeply, but in Italy I have almost half a million subscribers. So thanks to the visibility that I provide to the sponsors, I actually found many sponsors, but I, I, I never look for sponsors, usually they come to ask me for sponsorship and this is really not common this is it never happens it happens only to me and a few others so uh, don't take this strategy as good because it is not basically the most important thing for those who don't have the visibility that i have the most important thing is the rela the personal relationships because I, I can say every deal but almost every deal in the world is made between persons 
So the personal relationship in the end is the most important thing. And you know, consider that if a sponsor spends the money that it gives you for racing for an advertising campaign, they have a bigger return. So usually if you find a sponsor for racing, it's because you know that person and is passionate about what you do. But it's not my case because my sponsors do not give me money for racing, but to promote their brand on my videos. So it's different. Alexander, how expensive is one more bike season for you? Um, I, I, can I can't tell you how expensive it is for me because thanks to my sponsors and the visibility that I provide, I have some advantages or I, I do not pay some things. But a season like mine for a private who has to pay 100% of it mm, may cost between 10 and 30,000 euros. Where the delta is made of damages, the team, if you do it yourself or if you have or if you're supported by a team, and how many tests you do. King Crumpet, what's your day job? I assume whatever it is, it supports your racing career. Um, my Italian subscriber know it, you probably know, don't know it, I will make some videos about that. But this is my job. My job is made of, you know, with job you probably mean how do you make money. So I make money with the advertising from both the YouTube our revenue and the Facebook our ad revenue and the private sponsors. I make money by selling products like t-shirts, merchandising and other stuff. And I also make money because they invite me to participate in some events as a guest. So basically that's it. My, my job is being, we say YouTuber. And I also have a small media house with which we produce some photos and videos for motorsport. Shlomi Talbi. Hey dude, love your videos. Thank you so much for putting the effort. Thank you. Do you ride a bike outside the track? If so, do you like it more for cruising or sporty riding? Actually, I almost never ride outside the track because uh, first, I, I, I spend so much time on track that I don't feel the need to ride a bike on the road. And also, it's, it is so dangerous to ride on the road that I, I don't really like it. I do it sometimes for work, but I don't feel the need to go out for a ride. And I also don't have the time, actually. Minugo, do you use rear brake when braking? On road and on off-road, yes, always. Almost more than the front. On track, never. With never, I mean never. Just sometimes when I ride bike with no anti-wheeling, I use it not to wheel it too much. But, I, but otherwise, I never use it. Happy Smurf, how do you break lean angle barriers? I'm scared that the bike will slide away, will slide away below me. So uh, I, I actually felt the same at the beginning. I said, okay, I want to lean more, but I'm scared. What if, it, what if I fall? I will make a little video about that. First of all, do not try to do it on the road because it just takes a wet white line, a hole in the ground, some dust, and you risk your life. So if on the track I put the elbow down, on the road I have never put down my knees, never. So let's say that you are in a safe situation like on track or in an empty, huge parking spot and you just riding around. So the best way to break lean angle barriers and lean more is to go faster. Because if you go too slow, you feel the bike falling. The more speed you have, the easier it is to lean. Also, the wider the corner, the easier it is to lean. So try to do that. If you're on track, try to find the fastest corners and use them to practice your leaning. And the thing is that if you start to lean too much, the bike will turn too much and you feel like you're going to the inside. This means you have to go faster. But one important thing is when you're going down and trying to lean, do not accelerate because if you accelerate, the rear pushes the front and you lose it and you fall. And this is one of the most common mistakes for those who want to improve their leaning. Jack089, how do you feel when you start a race? This is the worst part of my job. I hate it. I hate the hours before the race. I learned how to control the anxiety, but it always was a big issue for me until the last races because the anxiety is so strong that you start to hate what you're gonna do. But as soon as the lights go off and you start, it's the best feeling in the world. So you forget all the sufferings that you had before the race. Juan Carlo Rigliano, Hi Alberto, 600 or 1000 for track? My suggestion is for the amateurs to start with the 600. It's cheaper, 
it's easier, it's slower, and physically it's much lighter than the 1000. You have more fun. The Helmet Crusher. First, how can normal people like me become one of racer in MotoGP? <laughs> This is a big question. I will make a video about it. I already did it in the Italian channel. If you want to watch it in Italian with English subtitles, I've linked it below in case. By the way, you need money. To race, you need money. And if you're very good and very talented and you start to win, you may have the chance that some big team or big sponsor notice you and support your racing career. That's it. But usually to start racing, you need a lot of money. This means that if you want, you can pay and race in MotoGP tomorrow. I mean, you have some things about licensing and you would be dangerous for the other ones, so they probably would not allow you to race. But if you know how to race and you have money, you can race tomorrow in MotoGP. I'm talking about a lot of money. The second is, what steps do I need to follow so I can race in MotoGP? So, by the way, I, I will make a detailed video about the costs and how to do it. So, as it usually happened in every Q&A that I did on the Italian channel, uh, you, you asked me too many questions. The good questions are have been so many that I split this video in two videos. So, this was the first part with the first part of the questions. And in the next days, the second part is going to come out. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe. The second part is going to come out. So, see you soon. Bye-bye.